Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffany and you are now watching Watch This. This is a channel dedicated to the film, television, industry, aspiring screenwriters. There will be reviews on here, but the first video that I wanted to uh, have is for aspiring uh, screenwriters um, things that they can implement helpful tips um, you can implement into your career I am aspiring screenwriter television writer and I've been implementing these resources in um, my journey and I thought it would be really cool to start a channel um, to share that with other inspiring um, writers so let's jump in I have just a few books here. These are some books that I have read. Um, let me just put down my iPad. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. Um, but I started off reading books. I started off my journey in 2018. Um, so I did a lot of research. I started reading books. I started going to workshops. And some of the books that I have read, which I highly recommend, is this one here. This is the TV Writer's Workbook and it's uh, written by Ellen Sandler and as you can see I have tabbed, I have wrote, <laughs> I've highlighted um, things like that. This book is modeled for spec scripts and if you don't know what a spec script is, a spec script is typically you're writing a new script for an already existing show a lot of time contests will ask you to write a spec script like the bigger uh screenplay the screenplay competitions like nickelodeon um sometimes let me see nickelodeon i believe like the cbs uh, and there's so many others but they will ask you to write a spec script and they'll give you a list um or it's, tell you to pick from there um a list of existing shows and typically the shows have to be on the air within five years or something like that but this is modeled for writing spec scripts but you can utilize the tips for this i highly recommend this is a really great book that i have used and it was really helpful the first book that i actually read that um another a writer friend had recommended this to me this was the first book it was called save the cat this is very much written in the sense of a formula so if you want to kind of know the business and the formula that a lot of studios kind of adhere to um i do recommend just reading the book to know um just to be informative about how things work it's, a, it's good to use it in that sense. It is very much a standard formula. So some people don't like this book, but I do recommend just reading it at least so you can kind of understand the formula that studios, um, most not all, but like the industry kind of follows this formula. So save the cat. This is the book that I'm currently reading right now. This is the Coffee Break Screenwriter. Um, and this is written by Pilar Alexandra. I'm actually about to take her course um, this summer, um, her rewriting course, which is up on her site now. Um, so I just already paid to take her course for this and I'm just reading her book because I want to kind of brush up on some things before I take her class. So this is a book, it's really good so far. You can already see like kind of tabbed up what I needed to do and I've been doing like some pro her um, exercises. Um, some of her exercises are really good as well. Um, this book, let me go to these two. So this, you may have seen this if you ever, <laughs> anybody library you that's a writer, you may see this in their back um, background. This book is story by Robert McKee and it does really explain um, exposition, uh, dialogue, emotion, like it just character breakdown, development. It really goes into detail. It is very dense, um, but it is very helpful, especially if, as a beginner, 
this is a very helpful book to kind of read and understand the terminology for different things um, in the industry. Okay, the next book here is Sid Phil Screenplay, uh, The Foundations of Screenwriting. Um, I This is for screenplays, which you'll know like a lot of people call screenplays it's a lot of terminology really some some people will say teleplay for a television um script a screenplay is typically uh for feature films um but this is for a feature film a book that will help you write feature films so this is that the other book that i showed you earlier this is specifically for television so this is specifically for television um so you do need to know the difference between because it is different techniques between a television series and then also a feature film this last book here this is so you want to be a producer um i started reading this because of course we don't want to sit around and wait to be <laughs> a, a, a staff writer i i do want to eventually kind of produce my own short film or even television series or even feature film like I want to kind of learn the ins and out and having at least basic knowledge of like being a producer will help me do that help me network and do that so those are the books that I've read and I'm currently using and I recommend all of those books there's several other books as well but these are the books that I've used that have helped me so those are the books I recommend beginning starting out I did um, I read books and then I also went to YouTube for a lot of information I didn't know any screenwriters at the time when I first started out so I just kind of typed in YouTube screenwriters as helpful screenwriter tips and I came across um, three channels that really have helped me along the way just um, with little thing even if it was like one or two videos it really helped me the first one was the youtuber d for darius um his channel was very helpful um with just explaining things he also created his own short film that was uh awarded several awards in different film festivals so i will link his channel below um and i highly recommend him the next one was a uh, Tyler Mari. I hope I'm saying his name correctly, but he had this is how I found him. He had a a video called uh how to write a screenplay in 48 hours or I wrote how to write your first draft in 48 hours and he really used the Harmon uh theory uh which a lot of if you don't know about that it's just like kind of the character breakdown to like the sequences to uh, create a complete storyline and he used he implemented that inside of that um, video and he kind of broke it down how he was able to write his first draft in 48 hours and it was very helpful so a lot of other uh, YouTube channels have um, kind of recreated the video and had their own take on it but that was how I found his channel and his channel is very helpful so I do recommend checking out his channel the next one up this is a really great channel this is called film courage they often have a lot of writers directors producers I think sometimes they even have actors but they mostly have a lot of writers on um, where they'll interview them and ask them helpful tips they'll also have I believe literary uh, consultants as well, but it's very helpful. I recommend checking them out. I've learned so much just from watching that YouTube channel um, and it's free, it's on YouTube. So I highly recommend Film Courage. So I listen to several podcasts there's one in particular if you're not going to take any one of these podcasts the one that i that is my tried and true um that i love is uh the screenwriters rant room so it the host so there were three hosts but now i think there's just two so hillier guest who is a producer screenwriter and i believe director as well he um is the lead host of this also a woman by the name of lisa she 
was on a lot of uh the podcast episodes but over time i think she hasn't been on there lately so i'm not sure if she still works there but um there's also another writer director um i think he's also a producer but his name is chris um and they give out they interview weekly different figures whether it's literary agents writers producers directors they also interview aspiring writers as well um it's just really helpful i've learned so much i learned about option deals i learned about how to get an attorney how to get a manager do you even need an attorney when do you when should you hire an attorney what you how to take a, a general meeting like i've learned so much from that so i highly recommend that um the next up that i kind of i do follow is script note um and that's with uh chris mason and my mind is going blank oh my god um I'm going blank and I'm sorry because it's the guy who freaking wrote a uh, big fish I don't know why I'm going blank which is a really great movie um I don't know why I'm forgetting his name but anyway the the guy that wrote big fish <laughs> he's also the host of the the show and they do really give really great um helpful tips um before I remember that same writer he held um, I went this was before the pandemic uh, he had um, a little panels at um, the SAG which is I live really close to the SAG and the Writers Guild and we were able to go into the SAG building um, which is um, a really great thing to utilize try to put yourself on newsletters uh list so that you can kind of get idea of when they're, they're going to be panels but he held a panel for incarceration um writing and how to properly write um with humility when it comes to people that are incarcerated so it was a really great panel which really helped me um and um yeah it was really good so i really got to um see him firsthand through that panel so that was really good um next up is i'm trying to like breeze through this so this video isn't super long paper team is another one that is a great uh, podcast on the page is with pilar i don't really listen to a lot of her podcast i think i listened to one or two episodes um because i have like my try to true that i kind of um stick to but they also have um the screenwriting life i think that's with meg yeah that one i listen to that for some time to time the treatment i listen to that that's where um a host he i'm going blank on these names and i'm so sorry but um he interviews actors uh writers and different talent in the entertainment industry and it's just really helpful to get uh opinions and just just different views from different aspects of the industry um and then also third and fairfax the wga podcast i watch i listen to that as well so those are the podcasts that i kind of listen to that i've received a lot of gems from so i do recommend like in your spare time like when you may have like writer's block listen to a podcast it, it'll help you kind of get out of that funk so those are the podcasts that i recommend next up this is most important thing is classes oh the first class that i've ever taken was the master class we've all seen the commercials with shonda rhimes Issa ray um malcolm gladwell like so many other david mammoth we always we've seen martin scorsese like there's so many commercials okay so i took shonda rhimes pot uh master class and when i tell you that was like the first class that i took ever for anything um because i was like i want to see like this is that's when master class kind of first came out shonda rhymes and i think michael glenwood there wasn't all of those other writers that are there or near now they weren't there um she was like one of the first screenwriters on there um, and then eventually David Lynch came along. So master class, Shonda Rhimes, I highly recommend taking that class. David Lynch class is also very helpful. I took Issa Rae's class and it was it was helpful. Um, but I will notice 
they it is very much giving you it's giving you tips but it's not breaking down like how to write a script now shonda rhimes actually broke down um different things about characters scenes she did go more in depth but everyone else they kind of writing from a sense of you already know how to do formatting you already know how to do that so we're just helping you with ideas in a sense of like the way you approach things so that's that also i took spike lee's class which is very helpful and when you take the class you can download the workbook that has exercises on here and then helpful tips so they do allow you to do that so i do recommend the master class classes um a class that i took so the second class ever that i paid for was um the writers room 50 50 i highly recommend this this was in the heart of the pandemic that i took this class and we did it virtual so we had like it was set up as if it was a real writer's room so i was able to communicate with other writers we would read our script we would actually do a table reads with each other's script give each other feedback and it was very helpful and they gave us kind of like homework each week um and at the end of the class we did a table read for the first 20 pages of each script for every class member and real actors would read your script. When I tell you, I was able to hear my script, my words, my dialogue, my character development read by real actors. And it just like, instant gratification. Like I felt so good about what I wrote. I highly recommend taking Writers Room 50-50. Um, highly recommend it so i'll link below miss yvette i love miss yvette she really helped me um as a new writer with that class so i'll link that below i told you that i just signed up for pilar's class i haven't taken the class yet but i've heard nothing but great reviews so i'm taking her rewrite class this summer so i will come up with a follow-up video in regards to like how i liked it what exactly um did we do like like I said, with um, the writers one fifty fifty, we had a table read um, with in in class, and then also real hired actors read our script, um, so we were able to hear it from authentic actors. So I'll let you know how I like the um, on the page class for the rewriters class. Also, Sundance collab they have classes i i took one class and it was just like how to deal with writer's block um but they have other class like for directors writers producers um i haven't really taken those classes and i think you they sometimes do have free classes but you do have to pay for some other classes um but i did take one class and it was helpful so i recommend sundance collab and in the cut okay so in the cut um, is a really cool it's like I would say an organization because you can sign up to be a member and they give you you can get on a newsletter they have resources for you um, they do have classes as well I took a class on how to um, what to do when you're in a general meeting like what questions to ask um, how to go and focus like what what's how how to make the best out of your first generals meeting so I took that class and it was very helpful it was $15 which is very affordable um, and it was on a Saturday so I do recommend in the cut and I'll link that below also you can do um, if you take their class the class is free you just take their class where they teach you how to um, they just give you information on how to be an assistant, a showrunner's assistant, a writer's assistant. If you take the class, you are eligible to be put on um, their list if they have jobs and they can kind of recommend those to you all. It's like a database where you can upload your resume and things of that nature. And I guess people from the industry can kind of pull from that database. So I do recommend taking that class as well and it was free. So that, so that was all of the classes that I've taken. There's so many others, but those are the ones that I actually took and um, I, I recommend. We just have two more things we're gonna brush through. Okay, so for organizations, organizations that I recommend, 
the Writers Guild of America, WGA. Now, um, I don't know if they're open now, but prior to this, like I told you, I started my journey in 2018, but I really started writing in 2019. And I started to go, We this was at the time when we can go into the Writers Guild and you can read scripts. There's a library inside the Writers Guild in Los Angeles, it's on 3rd and Fairfax, and you can read scripts. I don't know if they're open now, but I highly recommend, if you live in Los Angeles, and the Writers Guild Library is open, you should be there. You can get your hands on scripts, read it for free. You cannot take them out, but you can take pictures of whatever you need. The librarians are really helpful. I would be there all the time. Um, the last time I was there was January of 2020, so I haven't been there since. But I'm gonna actually call to see if they're open because things are opening up now, so they might be open, but that is a helpful resource and you can ask for help for the writer the librarians like if you want not necessarily want them to read something but if you want to ask a question about specific things or you want to ask for help like i need i need help with uh writing a scene um like flashback scene can you recommend a screenplay that or a script that I can read that you think that can help me they'll do that they'll help you with that so Writers Guild of America sign up for their newsletter they often have like workshops panels I highly recommend getting that I actually was able to get on the writer the pre-writers guild of um, America East because I went to a panel I signed up I submitted a script and my information and I was able to get on the, the pre WGA East um, group so I was able to get in that because of that um, oh the next one is diverse representation so I love this group um, of course I'm a black American I'm a woman of color the diverse representation is really fighting to get more people in the industry um, whether it's writers lawyers uh, sorry about that my camera cut off anyway so diverse representation um, is really fighting to get um, people of color in the group and marginalized groups inside of the industry because oftentimes they're not a lot of people I work on a studio a lot and there there is not a lot of people like I work there every day and it's not so um, they're really fighting for that especially when it comes to other avenues like literary uh managers agents directors all of that so you can actually go on diverse representation if you need to look up you want to kind of get a meeting with an attorney they have a database of all people of like a different group of people of color um they're on there that work in the industry and you kind of want to it doesn't mean you're going to get get a meeting with them but it is a way to connect so that it can offer more because a lot of times people say well we didn't know i don't know a, a black manager or a, a black writer this is where you can find it you can go in there and they have a list of different people they also have um meetings i've been to a few of their like panels and things like that it's very helpful um, diverse representation for sure um, secondly th well thirdly um, in the cut I already mentioned this in the cut helps um, with they have different resources they also have a newsletter where you can sign up and they'll offer different um, panels they all they'll list jobs as well so if they know someone that is looking for different people in the industry they'll list that so I recommend signing up for that the next one is Women of Color Unite. I am a part of this organization. I'm a new um, member. I actually was part of this um, Start With Eight program where I was partnered up with two mentors um, and I was able to get a writer to read my script, give me notes, and it was so helpful. Um, I was able to talk on the phone. Well, I did a Zoom meeting with one and then I talked on the phone with the other one and I was able to connect with one of my mentors and we were able to sit over, um, just discuss little things. She gave me helpful uh, tips and then she also read my script, gave me notes um, and returned it. It was so helpful. 
um so that was that women of color unite i also got so i was able to get the updated version because i already had final cut pro sorry not final i already had final draft um i already had final draft 11 and because of women of color unite i was able to get the updated version of final draft 12 i believe for free yes also there was another i got some other resources as well that has been helping me with like my vision boards when it comes to my writing it was it's not on here because we're not able to use it on here dang i'm going blank i will link it on the screen with the the name of the feature is i got it for free because of woman of color and i have been using it um for my script just to be like a visual board like a not necessarily a beat sheet but like a visual document that i can put like notes um pictures music all of that just to kind of keep it like an inspiration inspirational visual visual board for um the development of my screenplay so that was that Oh, the next one is the Black TV and Film Co um, Collective. So, I'm not a member of this group, but I am going to sign up to be a member. Um, hopefully soon. I'm just like, I have like a lot of things going on right now, but I do want to sign up for them. They do have a membership tier. I'll link their... Uh, website below i went to one of their meetings and it was very helpful they have like options where if you're a member you can they have like office hours where you can have one of the members read your script give you notes and that's very helpful they have other resources where depending on what tier you are in they can provide uh locations where you can shoot your podcast locations to shoot different things like that um also they pair you up with a mentor depending on what tier you're in you also get eligibility to go to any of their events um it's just really helpful and then if you're on a new newsletter um you are able to get notifications of any jobs and then they also they'll they'll link you up it's just like a good organization so uh the black tv and film collective recommend so the, as a new writer you don't have an agent you don't have a manager you're just writing you need to submit to contests I, I don't want to say you need to submit to contests but nine times out of ten if you don't really know people in the industry you can't just pass your script to someone you don't have access to passing your script over the best way to possibly get signed or get more opportunities get general meetings is to submit to a, a contest or submit to a fellowship so I am proud to say that I have submitted to two contests and I was able to see results. Um, the first contest that I submitted to was a Rock a Birdie um, contest. Uh, I was able to win a partial scholarship to go to France. I don't think I ever said this on a screen, but I was able to win partial scholarship um, to go to France to be paired up with a mentor and the mentor that I wanted was from HBO the only problem was it was the money that I had for it this happened like it was still kind of the pandemic and it fell through so I wasn't able to go because I, I was able to get a partial scholarship but it was pretty expensive like I had to pay for um, not only my flight but also partial of the fee because they did take off like a thousand dollars but the rest of the money it was just like I had to I could I, I couldn't if I, it would have been um, 
it wasn't a good financial time for me to use the money that I had to put towards that, which is, it was heartbreaking for that to happen to me because I wanted, I was able to submit in my synopsis and my screen, for my screenplay that I wrote and for a television series. And I feel really good about that, um, which I'm going to be working on my rewrite for that um, to start to submit that out again for next year. But yeah, I was able to win that. I highly recommend submitting to the Rock a Birdie um, Fellowship. Um, I'll link their information below. But yeah, that was something that's really cool. You get to go to Paris, you get to stay in the castle for a weekend, and then you get paired with a mentor. Sorry, I'll let that go. You get paired with a mentor, and you get to network with other fellows. So it's just like, it was like a dream come true, but then I didn't, I wasn't able to go. Anyway, the second fellow, uh, the second fellowship that I submitted to was the Sundance Episodic Lab. And I am proud to say that I made it to the second round. I did not win, uh, but I did make it to the second round and it was really helpful. I... I'm gonna do a separate video about the episodic Sundance lab because there's a lot of details that they ask for you. You had to submit your, I'll go into this now just really quickly. It's not just submit your script in this. It's a lot. Like of course you, when you do any fellowship, you'll, you know a contest. They wanna know more about you. You need your bio, you need your resume, you need your script of course, you need a synopsis. And then you need essays. There were a lot of essays. They wanted to know how, how, like, how does this television series, where do you see it going? How long do you see it going for? Like, can you, do you have enough information to kind of the foundation of it to make this be a full series? Um, you had to break that down. Um, you had to get backstory on why you're you're the one to write this story of course that's something that they teach you in general why you why now we know that in generals but those were the things that i did not know that i would have to go in putting in um because this was before i submitted to the episodic a sunday's episodic lab before i even took a class which i don't recommend doing this I also submitted my first draft. I don't recommend doing this, but I was very green and I just wanted to see where I was as a writer. And it kind of told me where I was as a writer that I do have a lot of potential. Um, I just need to, you know, work on my technique and kind of work on um, just little details. But as far as like the basics, now I really feel good about where I am as a writer, as far as like, I, ha I can only go up <laughs> like that's how I feel but the next thing that I submitted to and this is another thing uh, so uh, screen craft uh, I submitted also a feature film this was my first draft before I took a class I don't recommend doing this even though I did it if you can do it if you want to the only reason why people say don't do this is because you nine times out of ten you can't resubmit that script uh, some contests will allow you to resubmit a script but you have to wait like a year after so you can't like sub submit like i submitted it to the sundance 20 um in 2021 and then like i probably wouldn't like let's say if i was submitting this year i wouldn't be able to submit that script but probably next year i can submit that same uh, script sometimes they don't want you to do that i can't remember if they said you cannot resubmit the same script but i just wouldn't personally do that but i have a lot of tricks in my bag that i'm ready to write but those were um some of the ones that i wanted to start out with and i submitted to um screen craft and i actually i'm going to insert a clip of the actual breakdown that they gave me and i did pretty for my first this was my first feature screenplay, first draft. Um, I did not take a class, so I was, uh, the formatting was not the best. It was not the best, but I'm gonna upload it. I'm gonna be brave and upload my, um, my review back that they gave me of my score. Cause typically, of course, 
when you submit you want to at least strive for an eight an eight will give you put you on radar um even i think like a seven is a good start like a seven something is a good start but an eight is going to you want to get an eight so i was able to get um a 7.60 uh out of 10 which for my first draft like I was like so grateful for that. So I'll break down to you what that first page looked like. I submitted this in 2020. Um, and that's, this was before I took a class or anything. So I just wanted to see where I was as a writer. And I do recommend like if you want to see where you are as a writer. I didn't have any writers. Now I know several writers uh and aspiring writer so if i want to say hey can you like look over the script for me can i read this with you i swap scripts with people now all the time so that's something that i have now but i didn't have in 2020 and i submitted my script because i wanted to see where i stood at as a writer and i got that and i'm really proud of that and even making it to the sundance episodic lab i also i'll try to in uh cert a clip of what that look like it just says like you know congratulations tiffany you made it to the second round and for the sundance episodic lab they only wanted to read the first five pages if you the first five pages needed to be tight okay baby tight um and and then of course they needed all of those other details about your script um then they wanted to read the rest of your script so yeah your first listen Usually they say the first 10 pages for the Sundance episodic lab, first five pages needed to be tight, okay? They didn't want to read it past five pages. So, yeah, I'll submit, I'll insert both of those so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, yeah, so I do recommend ScreenCraft. I know uh, a few people have been, like, on a lot of these contests because, like, Shia LaBeouf and like some other already established people have been submitting and they've been winning. I, I'm, I get that. I get it. I get the industry. But my thing is like, what's for me is for me, and if it a like I, I can't worry about that. So if I wanted to submit this, get feedback on um, written feedback on what I need to help me, and I feel like this feedback was legit like reading back they broke down like what they like the pacing everything um maybe i will insert like i'm not going to insert the detail by detail they insert they told me like the, i like the pace they it, they broke down like my pacing you'll see on um the the image that I, i'll insert they have like the plot the character concept formatting they break all of that down and and rate it from you know one to ten so you want to strive for an eight on everything across the board but the overall feedback was that they would read um they would read my script again like they would read it um so maybe i will maybe i will insert that as well we'll see because like it's yeah I'll insert it as well as fine um but yeah those are just some of the things that i have been incorporating um in my career resources that has helped me if there's anything that i'm forgetting i will insert uh in the description box or if i need to make a separate video I will do that but again like this is going to be a channel moving forward that is going to be discussing you know television film helpful tips that I'm learning as I'm um, moving on and up and evolving in the entertainment industry and also um, I'm going to do reviews I just watched the film irreversible and I do want to do a review on that I also want to read the script though so which that movie was hard to watch it was hard it was good but it was hard to watch and i want to kind of like break down why you should watch this film as a writer so yeah so this is um my new channel um 
watch this and i hope you enjoy if you are a writer and you have helpful tips or you have a channel like i want this to be an open community please link your channel down below or any helpful tips that you think that i missed that you want to incorporate or other people on youtube that you want to offer um books anything like podcasts that i did not mention feel free to write that down below but yeah this is watch this thank you so much for tuning in have a great day peace